they're not gonna be able to see your whole body. I'll tell you what, it feels good when you come into a place and feel comfortable. Amen. That's a, that's a lot for a preacher. Your pastor knows exactly what I'm talking about. I know some places you go, you just don't feel welcome. But from the time I got out the car, Brother Rashad met me, amen, welcomed me right on in. Everybody just started loving me and just helping me. And, and that's a good thing. Because outside of the natural family, yeah. sometimes, a lot of times, your your closest family is your church. Amen. Amen. Even though people say blood is thicker than water. Yeah. Sometimes I disagree with that. The reason being is sometimes family lets you down and they mistreat you and misuse you. And sometimes you can't wait the Sunday morning. You can't wait the Bible study to get around the saints. Thank you for everything you have done, everything you're going to do, oh God. Lord, we just say thank you for your grace, your mercy. Lord, oh, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that every seed that falls out of my mouth as they hit the soil of the spirit of your people, oh God. I pray, oh God, that somebody may be empowered, restored, and built up in the spirit right now. Oh God, to touch your people, oh God. With your word, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray that they may be impacted and empowered. In Jesus' name. And let the people of God say, Amen. 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 If you will, if you will, grab your Bibles. Amen. I know it's seven minutes after nine. Amen. But if you will, grab your Bible. Amen. Grab your Bibles. If you would. Can I have the, the other mic that y'all had? That's, I call it the shout mic. Yeah. Shout. Yeah. Check, check. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles. We're going to a familiar passage. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Amen. Those that have been reading their Bible for years. Familiar story. Mark 5, verses 25 through 34. Mark 5, 25 through 34. Now, my wife know, and y'all now gonna know that I like to read out of two different Bibles. The reason being is this. The New American Standard is my favorite version, and the only reason why that is is because it's closer to the original language. Right. So it reads in the 20th century language, so you have a clarity understanding. But then again, I like Old Faithful, which is King James, right. to those that have been born and bred in, on King James. So I'm going to be reading out of two different Bibles, but I'm going to make my point out of the New American Standard. Amen? Amen. If that's all right with y'all? Amen. Amen. And we're going to look at verse 24, and I'm just going to read it all the way through out of the New American Standard, and I'm going to read it halfway through out of the King James Version. Mm -hmm. And it reads at Mark 5, 25. I'm sorry, not 24, but 25. And it reads, A woman who had an hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all she had and was not helped at all, but rather grown worse after hearing about Jesus. She came up to the crowd behind him and touched his cloth, for she brought, if I just touch his garment, I will get well. And immediately the flow of the blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And immediately Jesus perceived in himself that the power of proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. And you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing, trembling, and aware of what he had done, had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. Now I'm going to look at it. We're going to hear it again from the King James yes. Version. Yes. 
<clears throat> Amen. And it reads at verse 25, and I'm just going to stop at 29. And it reads, a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. In the final verse, and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And let the people of God say, Amen. Tonight's subject matter, amen, just for a short while, amen. We're going to let the Lord have his way, amen. The rewards. Of faith. Somebody say will be the rewards of faith. The rewards of faith. Now we know in Hebrews 11 and 6, the Bible says well, it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. Amen. And the Bible says he's a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. That will be my reference verse. The reason why that is that we have to be diligent at seeking God. We have to be diligent at studying our word. We have to be diligent in prayer. The reason why we have to be so diligent, because I say it all the time and I'm going to say it again. We got a real devil to fight. Come on, somebody. We got devils on the job. Come on, somebody. Sometimes the devil will show up in church. I ain't no preacher because the Bible says in the book of Mark, when Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, that the devil showed up. And Jesus said, Jesus, then let us alone. What do we have to do with you? I come by sometimes the devil don't want you to get your praise on. The devil don't want you to pray. Come on, somebody. The devil don't want you to read your word. But I come by here to tell you, you got a real devil to fight. seek him. Diligently seek him. We're in an age now where we do a lot of things with diligence. Those that, that love to dress up and put on clothes and put on fine raiment, even like myself. We like for everything to be intact. Even for the ladies, when they about to leave the house, they'll, they'll take a glimpse at the mirror. Then by the time they get in the car, they got the, the mirror down again. And, and if you're crying with a man, he said, come on, woman. Let, let, you do a look at yourself five times. And you get in the car, you, you got to make sure your lipstick ain't over here. And make sure your makeup ain't too much over there. You got to make sure everything is lined up. So we do that with diligence. We make sure perfection is on the outside through our physical appearance. But a lot of times we slack with diligence when we come when it comes to serving the Lord. Sometimes we gotta pump you up to come to church. Sometimes if your name ain't on the program, you don't want to talk to me. If your name ain't on the program, you sit swollen up and pious. But I come by here to tell you, if you learn how to serve God with all your might and all your strength, and learn how to love your neighbor as you do yourself. Then the blessings will come on party and overtake me. It's through the persistence of diligence. So he said, those that diligently see him. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, then we have to, they begin burn before they threw him in the den of lions. They Daniel did not want to take meat or take indulge into the wine that they had, that the king had set up. But the Bible said that they threw him in the lion's den. But they kept the faith. I come out and tell you, sometimes you may be in the lion's den, but you better learn how to keep the faith. You, you know, like Bill may be doing, you may be down with spamming, lunch and loafing. All you got is mammy with the bread is. But you better learn how to keep the faith. You may have got nothing but a quarter type of gas, and it's two more weeks before you get to check. But you better learn how to keep the faith. You may be on SSI and Social Security, and it may seem like you're down and out of the present. It ain't even me. Forget me. It ain't even a way in the distance. But you better learn how to keep the faith. This widow woman, in Luke 18, the Bible says she was persistent 
at this unjust judge. See, a lot of folk they ain't persistent no more. They, we in this microwave generation. If it don't happen instant, if I don't get healed by the end of the week, if I don't get the promotion by the end of the month, I ain't coming back to church. But if you get like this woman right here, in the book of Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 5, which is the same story with the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says you kept talking to us. So why come by to tell you, you got to keep talking to yourself. You got to say you weren't going to get the promotion. But say in the name of Jesus, say in the Lord of 15, I will be promoted. I will go forward. I will not be a statistic. My daughter will not be a prostitute to the people. My son will not be a pressure. He's going to pull his pants up and make good grades. You got to learn how to talk to yourself. I don't mean just literally, but inwardly. So you got to get like David. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 30, they were spake of stoning David around the sixth verse. The Bible said after they took the, the possessions and the women, they spake of stoning David. But in the sixth verse, the Bible said, and David encouraged himself. Oh, come on, somebody. I believe everybody. I'm to be able to preach just a little bit. You may not ever get a courage of color. You may not ever become a pastor. You may not never be a prophetess. But I think everybody just ought to be able to just preach just a little bit. Just enough to encourage yourself. Right on the shower. Raise your kneecaps. Come on, somebody. Some of us got arthritis and burst out. But yet and still, we press our way. In spite of how we feel. We may have a headache on this side. But yet and still, if I got to get in the press and do what I gotta do because I've been living with this extra for 12 whole years. Somebody say I'm tired of this issue. This issue been following me to church. Oh come on somebody. This issue been bothering me. This issue will keep sending me emails and text messages and calling me on the phone and leaving a voicemail. Come on somebody. You ought to tell your neighbor I'm tired of this issue. If you look at if you look at the Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel, round the third verse, they say Nebuchadnezzar. They set forth their image. You gotta worship this. See, some folk they got some things that they want you to worship. That way they bring it before you. They want you to worship their brand new car. That's why they wax it and come out and bring it by your house. Oh, yeah. oh come on, somebody. I'm going to bring the Mercedes around your house so you can look at it. They don't want you just to look at it, but they want you to adore the car. So that's why they showing it to you. They ain't showing it to you because it's a blessing. No, they showing it to you because they want you to worship. So what the sister do? She'll get her hat done. She'll go by the sister house. They can't afford to put the brand new track set. They can't afford to get the brand new perm. They can't afford to get the weed pieces on the back. So she'll say, girl, I look. Oh, then I was ready for that. You know she ain't done yet. She'll stop by the nail salon. She said, I gotta get cute this Friday. I gotta look slim this Friday. I done got my check and it's Friday. Oh, we remember the song. The man used to say, Sir Charles, he used to say, it's Friday. Oh, come on, somebody. So, she'll stop at the sister house. They can't afford to get her nails done. She at home putting press on. Come on, somebody. The press on nail. The press on design. She know it ain't gonna last that long. But while it's on her finger, she gonna print some way. So the woman that got everything going on, she gonna put it in front of you and want you to worship it. But here it is, here it is, here it is. Daniel 3. The Bible says they put forth this image and they went back to the king.